Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I post weekly videos on all things fashion and beauty related that are also vegan and cruelty free. So if you like what you see and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It would mean so much to me and I would love to have you be a part of my family. <coughs> La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. This was a highly debated thing on my Insta stories, um, the pronunciation of this. So call it what you want to call it. So today's just gonna be a little bit of a chit chat video. I wanted to talk about the difference between cruelty free beauty products and vegan beauty products because there is a difference. And I know that a lot of you guys watching this probably already know the difference. So this video isn't necessarily for you, but if anyone happens to stumble across my channel and isn't sure about the differences, I thought I would just go ahead and make this. To be honest with you, when I first went vegan or plant-based, I did not know the difference at all. So that's why I think it's important to talk about. A lot of companies tend to use certain verbiage to make it sound like they are cruelty free when they're really not, or they'll be misleading about their vegan products. So it's definitely worth discussing, and I think it's important to just kind of keep these types of conversations on the forefront. That being said, I love this community so much because of the compassion that its members have, and me getting to talk with so many of you guys who share a similar mindset as me is just the biggest blessing in the whole entire world and it makes me wonder why I didn't start doing this sooner. But before I get started, I just wanna say, if you happen to come across somebody who says that they're vegan but they're using a product that's not vegan or is not cruelty free, if you want to say something, please do it in a way that's compassionate. Anybody that's chosen a vegan lifestyle obviously cares and obviously is trying to do the best that they can, so I think Kindness is the best approach always. Just wanted to say that. Okay, let's start with cruelty-free beauty. So cruelty-free means that none of the products have been tested on animals and none of the products that are used to make the product, AKA the stuff that they get from suppliers, are tested on animals either because um, sometimes companies use other suppliers for different materials and those companies might test on animals which would make the end product, not cruelty free. So in short, that's what cruelty free is. And if you're not familiar with animal testing, I know I wasn't for a long time and I have a ton of friends who still don't know what it is, which is crazy to me that we aren't talking about this. Animal testing means that the products are tested on the animals physically, not like they put lipstick on a bunny rabbit or anything like that, but they actually pour stuff into their eyeballs to see if they have a reaction, to see if a human would have the same reaction. They also pour it down their throats. They're kept in really poor conditions and all sorts of animals are tested, including bunnies and mice and rats and cats sometimes and sometimes even dogs. If you love animals, then you definitely don't wanna support that. And you may be asking yourself, why are we still doing this? Well, <laughs> there is one country, China, that requires animal testing still in order for products to be sold in the country, which has a huge impact on animal testing because a lot of companies want to be able to sell in China for monetary purposes, and so they do, and that requires them to test on animals. Which brings me to a very important point, and this is where companies try to mislead you a little bit in their verbiage. So usually you can go to the FAQ page of a company's website and it will tell you their stance on animal testing. Almost always it will say something. And where it gets confusing is a company can be like, we are cruelty free, we do not support the testing on animals, blah, 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 blah. And then at the end it'll say, except for where required by law, AKA China, which means they sell in China. So companies love to tell you that they're cruelty free when they aren't actually cruelty free. So that's where it takes a little bit of investigating and digging, and that's where it gets a little complicated. So I link in the description box of every single video my favorite sources to find out if a product is cruelty free, um, one of them being Tashina from Logical Harmony, who is also here on YouTube. You should definitely check out her channel if you haven't already, but she is very good at um, emailing companies and getting all the details. I also love Cruelty Free Kitty, Ethical Elephant. There are quite a few, so go ahead and check them out. I like to look at all of those websites and kind of compare them against each other to see what the verdict is on whether or not a company is actually cruelty free or not. So I also actually will email companies myself from time to time because I am a blogger, I do get to try out new products and I love to be able to find cruelty-free vegan products before they become popular. So I get a lot of indie brands, smaller brands. But that being said, you might see some products here from time to time that are not on the lists 
down below and that's because I've had to email them myself. So if you don't wanna trust me and you wanna wait for them to get on that list, I totally respect that and understand that. I do the best that I can, but I am definitely not an expert in that field. So if you wanna wait for them to be 100% approved by the websites down below, no offense taken. So I would say checking those websites is going to be your safest way to bet that something is cruelty free or not, but also feel free to email the companies yourself. I see no harm in emailing a company saying, hey, I'm interested in vegan and cruelty free options. What do you offer? Are you cruelty free? What are your vegan products? I think that just brings it to the front of these companies' minds that people are interested in that and I think that's a good thing. I feel the same way about going out to eat at a restaurant. Hey, what do you have that's vegan? I think that every time we talk about things like this, it brings it to the forefront and makes it relevant. So I say email away, comment on their Instagram. Okay, so to add another sort of complicated layer onto cruelty-free beauty is the fact that a lot of cruelty-free companies are owned by a parent company that is not cruelty-free. For example, Too Faced is a cruelty-free company, but they are owned by Estee Lauder, which is a bigger company that actually sells in China, so they do test on animals. They are the umbrella company, so to speak, which allows Too Faced to grow into a bigger company. I see this as a good thing because I want the cruelty-free beauty companies to get bigger and to take over, and I want all the sales to go to them. And I know that not everybody feels that way and a lot of people feel like you're funding the parent company. Um, I have a whole video on this so I'm not going to get into it in this video at all, but I will link that down below. If you're interested in understanding my stance on it and if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. I feel like we're all on the same team here and we all just want animal testing to end. So moving on to vegan beauty, I was under the impression for a while, so I don't blame you if you're under the same impression, that cruelty-free included vegan. Because to me, if you're going to say you're cruelty-free, but then you're gonna have animal products in your makeup, that's not really cruelty-free, right? At least I don't think so. But that's not the reality of it. The reality is that cruelty-free beauty and vegan are not the same. So you may have a product that's owned by a cruelty-free company that's not vegan because they don't consider that to be the same thing. So it does require a little bit of extra research when you're buying stuff to make sure that the cruelty-free product you're buying is vegan. And you may be thinking, what in the world is not vegan in my makeup? And that is a very good question. There's a whole laundry list of items that might not be vegan that could be in your makeup. And I will link a list of that down below, but to name the most popular ones are Carmine, which is crushed beetles used in a lot of red colored powder products. So like a lot of eyeshadows have that in it, um, lipsticks even, uh, blushes, bronzers, things like that. And then beeswax, which you will find in a lot of mascaras, lipsticks, um, some eyeliners, some eyebrow pencils. It's in a lot of things. And they actually call it, Cer I believe Sarah Alba is the term that they use. And sometimes they'll put beeswax in parentheses and sometimes they won't. And then lanolin, which is made from sheep's wool. Those are only three, like I said, there are way more than that. But those are the three that I most commonly see in everyday makeup brands. So you definitely have to watch out for that. It does require a bit more research, which is why sometimes it is just nice to buy from a 100% vegan brand. I love Pacifica, I love, Oof, I believe Ofra is 100% vegan. More and more now, companies are labeling vegan products, which is amazing, and it's probably because of people who email the companies asking for vegan products. So that's awesome. Uh, Wet n Wild is a great company that labels their products that are vegan. ColourPop now has it on their website. It says what's vegan and what's not vegan. And I believe even Sephora now has a little description that says vegan or not. So that definitely makes things a lot easier and is definitely something to look out for. Again, with vegan beauty, just because it's a vegan product, doesn't mean it's cruelty free. For example, L'Oreal came out with a shampoo conditioner line that said vegan on the bottle. So that's very confusing for people who are vegan and they're like, oh yay, vegan product. If they don't know that L'Oreal actually is not cruelty free, they do sell in China. So they do test on animals to sell in China. Companies love to advertise their stuff as vegan if it means sales. So that's good if they feel like it's an aspect that people are looking for, but you have to watch out for that. So I find it easiest when I'm shopping for makeup or beauty products to start with the cruelty-free brands and then to find out if the product is vegan or not. 
So those are the major differences. Definitely not everything, but I hope that I've broken it down a little bit so that if you are confused, you understand it a little bit better. If you are stressed out by this in any way, just have comfort in knowing that there are 100% cruelty-free and 100% vegan brands out there. They're a little bit more niche and small, but it's definitely great to support them. You guys leave your favorite down below and let me know what your favorite is because I know there's a ton and let's help each other out. Let's make this cruelty-free and vegan beauty lifestyle easy and fun. Uh, take a shot every time I say vegan or cruelty-free in this video because I'm sure it was a lot. And if you don't drink, take a shot of La Croix, La Croix, La Croix. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.